Hey everybody, welcome back. So for today's video, it's gonna be another fitnessy, health, weight loss related topic that we're gonna get into. I'm sure you guys already noticed based on the title, it's gonna be weight loss and dieting that we're gonna talk about for today. I do wanna give a quick disclaimer for anybody that's new here. I am not a dietitian or nutritionist or a doctor. Any of the thoughts and opinions that I am providing to you guys today is just based on the research that I've done while working through my masters, um, as well as my own personal experiences over the years with personal training, working with other people on their weight loss goals, and just any continuing education that I have done on the particular topic and so I just want to put that out there any of this is just from research that I have done myself I, I am really excited to talk about this with you guys today this was definitely a highly requested uh, discussion point that people were asking for and I do want to let you guys know so I am gonna just be sticking with the basics of weight loss and some of the misconceptions and myths around uh, weight loss and dieting for today. People were asking for things about supplements as well and that is going to be my next video that I will do on um, fitness and health related things just because I think that supplements themselves are just like a whole video just in itself because that I can really get into the nitty gritty on that one obviously since that's what my entire thesis was about. So yeah, for today, we're just gonna stick with trying to debunk some of the things that influencers would have you guys believe. I know that we kind of touched a little bit on my uh, annoyances that I have with influencers and how they try and push things on people uh, just because they want to make a quick buck. And especially when it comes to weight loss, I get very, very angry with people because it's, it's such a hard thing to work through building those really strong habits to, to be consistent in your weight loss journey. So having assholes that are just trying to push two week programs as if that's gonna somehow magically cause you to drop 50 pounds. I, I really hate that. And especially when you look at some of those influencers, I mean like if they have like a like a six day shred, like do do a thousand push-ups a day and you're gonna get a six pack. Well, if you have like less than 8% body fat, sure, you're gonna get a six pack in that time. But if you're a normal human being that has you know, a decent amount of thickness to you, that's not gonna do it. You know, if you wanna actually show muscle tone, you have to be lean enough to show it. And so to try and push out there that in six days or two weeks or however long you're gonna be shredded is just factually and inherently wrong. And I get so mad because the likelihood of derailing someone that is trying to lose weight and get to that body type is is very high and it's you, you're not you're not doing anyone a favor by pushing bullshit programs as someone that takes their personal training position very seriously i hate people like that i will always give a disclaimer and i will also never push programs on anyone if you want assistance on a one-to-one -one basis i am more than happy uh to talk to anybody if you reach out to me more than happy to work with you on an individual basis but i will never push out generic programs because each person is different and your goals and needs are going to be completely different than someone else so now that we've gone through like almost five minutes of me just being like, Rah! I'm gonna do my makeup in the background because this is a get ready with me. So I'm gonna have some fun. Uh, for my eyeshadow palettes for today that I'm gonna be using, I got from Makeup Maniacs. I'm, I'm so excited. I love Makeup Maniacs. They have so many cool things. I have one of their green palettes. This is the Green Goddess 2. This is what it looks like. Just super cool different shades on there. And I also do have some single shades from them as well as from Terra Moons Cosmetics, they have some really awesome single shade like duo and multi-chromes. And so I'm gonna try and see like for these two in particular, if I can find a way to work those in as well. So I'm very excited to, to do a lot of green on my eyes today. I'm gonna go ahead and just get started and we can jump into the topic. So the first thing that I kind of want to get into is just the misconception that you have to do a ton of physical activity to lose weight. While fitness 
and exercising does matter as a whole for your overall physical health, your cardiovascular health, it is important. The, the primary thing that you need to focus on for weight loss is going to be your diet. And so, and anytime that you have people that are really trying to push like, oh, you have to, you know, run a ton and do a ton of cardio and everything, it's, that's not inherently correct. It does help because of the whole mantra of calories in, calories out, and you do need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. By decreasing your diet, you're gonna already get there much faster than if you're just focusing on like doing a ton of exercise. I am someone that tends to be a little bit nuts when it comes to how much physical activity I do, but that's just because I really enjoy physical fitness. I, I think that we need to recognize that even though fitness and exercise does play a role, your diet is so much more important for getting you to wherever you want to go in your weight loss journey. Let's jump into the the idea of like a calorie deficit because I think that that is something that a lot of people tend to struggle with is that they think that they are putting themselves into a calorie deficit but many times they are not and I know that there are a lot of personal trainers out there that get very frustrated with their clients because a lot of times it's it's fairly apparent when you are not in a calorie deficit because obviously if you're not in a deficit you're not going to lose the weight. But there are some exceptions that I think it is worth noting because you don't want to just immediately attempt to discredit yourself or your clients you know by saying oh well you're not losing weight because you you're just not doing what I told you to do with your diet. You're not putting yourself in a calorie deficit. There are some instances where there are medical reasons why someone might not be able to lose weight and so it's just worth a quick mention on there. So things like if you have a thyroid condition or if you are taking specific medications, there are actually a lot of medications out there that one of the side effects is weight gain, which would obviously make it very, very difficult for you to lose weight even if you are in somewhat of a calorie deficit because you have the medication that's kind of working against you. Another reason why people might not be in a true calorie deficit is that when you're counting calories, you have to be very, very precise and specific on there. And so if you are not weighing all of your food and all of your beverages, then you are probably misjudging what you are actually ingesting. And so what I have found is that a lot of people tend to, if they're just like eyeballing it, they are going to under value the the calorie amounts that they are that they are taking in and so you know you you can't just go based on like the the prescribed serving size that a container might have on it you, you just it, it's it's so much better to use an actual food scale they, they don't cost a lot but you're going to be a lot more precise if you're weighing your food versus if you're just eyeballing it and i think that a lot of people also lose sight of that they aren't tracking the beverages that they are ingesting I think that that is definitely something where I've noticed with clients and family members and even with myself that when I was documenting what I was eating and drinking, I was oftentimes forgetting to include like specific amounts for whatever beverages th that I was drinking. Even with things where they are marked as having zero calories and like no sugar or whatever, you are still ingesting something and so there are still going to be effects from it ingesting that and so that was definitely a big one that I was noticing with clients was that if something said that it had no calories to it they weren't marking down the weight of that particular item at all which you have to still mark down the weight of it because it is going to have an effect on your body and your weight loss that's kind of something to keep in mind <sighs> I am not I'm not liking this yeah, and so I, I think using a food scale is definitely going to be far more beneficial than just going based on what's marked on the packaging and if you're you're eyeballing what you're taking in. And so really just making sure as well that you're super consistent, I think is very important. A lot of people will have like cheat days. I think initially you want to try and avoid having cheat days because you're wanting to build those positive habits of following the diet that you have set for yourself. And so 
if you're allowing yourself cheat days in the beginning, that can kind of easily derail you for where you're trying to go. I think just being cautious on that and kind of thinking about like, what is it about that particular food item that is causing you to crave it? Why do you need that cheat day? What are, what are you wanting to ingest that you need to cheat for? Because there's probably some other healthy food item that you can have that will give you whatever satisfaction for that particular craving without you actually cheating on your diet. That's kind of one of those things where getting a nutritionist or a dietitian can really be beneficial because they can provide you with a breakdown of like what kinds of foods can help with those cravings and that is something where you know it, it's really very crucial to if, if you are someone that doesn't know a lot about how to break down different food items and things talking to your physician talking to a dietitian is very beneficial because they can explain things to you that you might not otherwise know about how you can break that stuff down so like if you were someone that has a very big sweet tooth perhaps having some fruit items would be beneficial so like I am someone that loves gummy snacks and sour candies and things like that and so when I am craving those if I am trying to work on my diet and eat healthier I, I will get fruit like pineapple which is more acidic like the little clementines strawberries things like that that provide that that sweet craving that I need as well as the kind of tang that the sour candy provides without getting all of the negatives of literally no nutritional value that the gummies provide whereas the fruits provide not just the craving satisfaction but they also provide nutritional value. Looking for those kinds of things can be really beneficial. There are always going to be healthier food items that can satisfy those cravings without you needing to have that unhealthy item but that is where getting help on those kinds of things is important if you just don't offhand know. I'm not liking how this eye look is turning out. I don't know about you guys what your thoughts are, but this isn't, uh, isn't getting me what I would like. I kind of like, I feel like I look a little bit sickly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Another thing also to kind of consider with different types of foods is why do we have those cravings for those foods in the first place? And one of the big things that especially within the American population for why those cravings happen is that a ton of the types of foods that we get have preservatives in them. And the reason why that is the case is not just this, but it's also something to kind of keep in mind is that Americans do enjoy purchasing uh, items in bulk for multiple reasons. One being that it's cheaper to buy in bulk. Another is not having necessarily the time to go to the grocery store every day to get fresh produce and things like that. And so you're gonna be more likely to purchase things that have preservatives that will last so you don't have to keep going to the grocery store every two seconds. Whereas in European cultures, having things like fresh markets multiple times throughout the week in different cities and just going to the grocery store more often to get fresh foods is a more common thing and so in European countries you're less likely to ingest high quantities of food items with preservatives just because you're gonna be going to get fresh foods more frequently that don't have preservatives and one of the big things that that people don't always consider is that preservatives have a lot of addictive qualities to them and the reason for that is that two of the primary substances that are used for preservatives are sugar and salt and those are two items that definitely cause cravings and and feed into those addictive type things and so that's something to kind of keep in mind is that if you can try and avoid getting foods that have high preservatives in them because then you're you're gonna be less likely to brave those things and keep going back to get those food items and so it, it kind of falls into that thing like everyone knows Knows, you know the saying behind that you can't have just one of like a chip or something and there is so much realness to that statement because of the high preservative and salt content in those chips you are going to keep craving it 
over and over and over again. So you're gonna continue to buy those products and continue with those negative habits once they've started. And that's where it falls back on the, the idea of don't have those cheat days, especially if the cheat day is going to be for food items that have preservatives in them, because then you're gonna have a harder and harder time getting away from eating those food items because you're gonna continue to feed that addiction of needing that food. I think I'm spending too much time on my eyes. This is just not getting anywhere. I'm gonna finish this up real quick and then just move on. Mine's looking more interesting. There is like no color payoff with this. Okay, I finished that. <laughs> I finished up my eyes uh, off camera a little bit more. There's been a ton of fallout going on on my face from the uh, the Terabooms duochrome that I put on, but I really like the green. I think that helped out a lot to fix up the eye because I gotta be honest, I was a little disappointed with how that ended up looking. So, yeah, whatever. Maybe it'll be fixed with mascara and whatever else, but we're gonna move on to the face because... <laughs> I am over my eyes at this point. All right, so continuing on, the the next thing to kind of talk about is that with a lot of people, and I think this is true for most, honestly, we want to reach our goals quickly because it's very easy to get frustrated and feel like you're not really getting anywhere. And so quick fixes are like, obviously the, the go-to thing that people want. They want those immediate, instantaneous results. I think that that's one of the reasons why a lot of people get frustrated very quickly is if they don't notice an immediate change. And that definitely goes back to some of the psychological stuff that I was talking about in my other video, where you have to set yourself smaller goals that are more attainable as you're trying to reach that overarching larger goal, because otherwise you are going to get frustrated very, very quick. That's kind of also where getting in touch with a dietitian or your physician can really help because they can, you know, help set those those initial goals with you and kind of give you a way of documenting your progress so that that way you don't feel like you're not making any kind of headway. And that's that's why I keep mentioning over and over like getting professional assistance, not just from like documenting your goals and making sure that you are making progress and getting thoughts and advice, but it's also very important just on the medical side of things to make sure that you do talk to a physician before starting any kind of diet because it can be very very dangerous if you jump into a diet not having all of the information about the potential effects of that diet if you do it incorrectly so for instance with the keto diet that is one of those where you really want to make sure that you know what you're doing before you really jump in and definitely go and talk to a physician beforehand to make sure that you don't have any underlying health issues because keto can be very, very dangerous. It, it is one of those diets that statistically has shown that it can be effective in the short term for weight loss goals, but if you don't know what you're doing, it can be very, very detrimental to your health, and especially if you have other underlying health problems. For instance, if you are a diabetic, I would never recommend that you do the keto diet because you would run way too much risk of damaging your organs almost instantaneously and you could potentially even face not surviving I guess. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid like saying certain terms because I don't want to have like YouTube be like you're talking about things that you can't talk about and so but yeah it can be very very dangerous and so you want to make sure that you go and speak with a physician to make sure that you are medically safe to attempt certain types of diet and so it, it is very important because with a lot of diets, they're going about things in an unhealthy way. And I'm I'm a huge believer that you don't need to follow any specific like fad diet of any kind. It's far more beneficial just to consume things in moderation rather than like eliminating entire food groups. And especially with macronutrients, so real quick, I don't want to get too in the nitty gritty. So for macronutrients, there are three, right? There's proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. And your body needs all of those macronutrients to survive, of which the most important is protein. And so that's part of where you can see with certain diets where they cut out carbohydrates or they cut out fats, people are able to survive. But if you cut out protein completely, you will be in a very bad spot. And what I, I 
I don't mean with that is like obviously you can have vegetarian diets and what whatever else that you want to have so I'm, I'm not saying don't cut out meat right so meat is only one way of attaining the macronutrient that is protein so there are other ways of getting protein in your diet but it's very important to understand that if you cut out protein as a macronutrient your body cannot survive it one of the things to keep in mind is that if you are not using meat to get your protein you are no longer having a complete protein source because meat does provide you with all of the different amino acids that make up protein so when you are finding other ways of supplementing the lack of meat in your diet you need to make sure that you are finding a way to complete the proteins with whatever things you're using to supplement it and so that's where like some of the the plant-based diets it does provide you with some protein sources but they might not be complete proteins and so you just need to make sure that you are actually ingesting everything to to complete the proteins and so that's where again if I'm, I'm getting into the nitty-gritty and that's why it is important important to speak to a physician or a dietitian or nutritionist that will be able to explain to you what foods and supplements you can take that will make sure that your diet is still complete even if you aren't using a whole foods method of acquiring all the nutrients that you need in your diet. And so I think that's one of the things where people when they're following these other diets and they are excluding these types of foods from from their diet, they're they're sometimes missing the mark in not recognizing that they need to then supplement those nutrients that they are no longer gaining since they aren't eating the things that normally would provide them with those nutrients. And so that's where you have to be very careful with what you're doing. I think also one of the things where people can tend to struggle with a weight loss program is that, especially if you're doing something like counting calories, that can definitely get a little bit complicated. I think that if a program is too complicated, people will lose motivation to do that particular weight loss program because it becomes too tedious and difficult to maintain. And I think that's where they do fall into the trap of some of these, I guess, easier to follow diet programs where everything is kind of tracked for you and all that they really recommend is just cutting out massive food groups just because that's easy. Like if you're thinking about it and you're like, okay, I'm gonna follow this one diet because all that it tells me is I need to cut out 100% of carbohydrates from my diet. Well, that's easy to follow follow but you're not you're not necessarily recommend uh, recognizing the ramifications of that and then you might not be supplementing that energy source the way that you need to because carbohydrates provide energy and so especially if you're going to be combining physical fitness with your diet to lose the weight you need to make sure that you are still getting enough of an energy source to sustain yourself during your exercise and so cutting out entire food groups you have to make sure that then you are supplementing supplementing those, those nutrients so that your body does have enough of an energy source to be able to function during the exercise. And so there again, I think that's where one of those things where like if you're doing the keto diet, you know, everyone recognizes then that you are essentially using fat as your energy source and so because you're 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 eliminating proteins and carbohydrates to put your body into a state of ketosis which essentially means that in order to draw energy from what you're eating it's going to just pull from the fats and so in theory you're just going to be burning only fat then at that point and so that's what's going to help with your weight loss but what they don't recognize is that that can if you continue to place your body into a state of ketosis that can wreak havoc on your organs especially your liver and kidneys and so that's especially where it falls back on like diabetics I don't recommend <laughs> That you guys do that diet and it is something that is very very dangerous if done incorrectly and so you definitely want to make sure that you are educating yourself on what that actually means to place your body into that kind of state i think i know why my eyeshadow wasn't working the way that i wanted to i didn't put any eyeshadow primer on beforehand I'm just on my bare eyelids threw stuff on there that was my fault my face is gonna suffer for it so what i typically do as the the easiest way to drop weight is that I will place myself into a calorie deficit and I will eliminate from my diet the things that really provide essentially no nutritional value. So that's pretty much the 
candy and the gummies. By doing that, I am then only providing my body with things that it can utilize and burn through, which helps me lose weight at a, at a decent rate. Love it when my memory card dies, literally mid-sentence. Real quick, just to catch you guys up, since my memory card broke literally mid-sentence, uh, so that you're not lost with the next portion, I essentially was just finishing up talking about what weight loss techniques work for me, and that there's gonna be people that will disagree or agree with pretty much any type of weight loss thing out there, so it's important to do appropriate research, and so this is where I jump into that, I guess. So you're, you're always gonna find studies that will support or debunk literally any argument that people make when it comes to this kind of thing. Just because studies are also so subjective with how they are done, whether it be sample size, if they place parameters on the study, whether it be gender or age or whatever else, that will always cause the study results to be different. And so that's why it's important to do a lot of research because then that way you're gonna be as informed as possible on like which groups of people do better with certain things. It's kind of interesting. So for instance, when it comes to things like a whole foods diet mm -hmm. um, versus using chemical supplements like powders and pills and whatever else, if you're looking at it from a performance standpoint, the majority of women can perform just as well physically if they are using just a whole foods diet versus using supplementation. Whereas with men, there is a bit more of a necessity to utilize supplements once you get to a certain level of performance that you are attempting to achieve. Just because men have a tendency to burn through the food that they are ingesting quicker when they are increasing their perform uh, their, their fitness and exercise level. That's why they need supplements to help assist because especially once you get to a certain level of like trying to gain mus lean muscle mass while also increasing your activity level, guys would have to be eating all the time to be able to maintain that. And so that's where supplementation does become a necessity. Whereas with most women, there are obviously always exceptions once you get to a certain level, but for the majority of women, even at the competition level, they, with a whole foods diet, could still achieve a fairly high performance level. So that's just kind of something that's interesting where it definitely does matter when you're looking at these studies for what they recommend for a particular diet that you that you also look at what type of population they're pulling from for that particular study. It's one of the things that, that I tend to look at pretty deeply is what are they pulling from for who they're actually testing for these studies. And, and that's, again, where it's so important to see a physician before starting a diet because it is so subjective based on who you are as a person and what your dietary needs are. I don't know why I like putting highlighter just right on my temple. Nobody else in the beauty community that I've seen does that. I have a hard time talking while I'm putting mascara on. Yeah, so with this video, I'm, I'm not wanting to get too in depth on every single thing to consider with a diet, but what I would love is if you guys want to drop in the comments questions that you have about different diets specifically or uh, just weight loss in general, and to really try and have a conversation about some of the questions and concerns that you guys might have. Maybe there's something that I haven't considered in just this brief rundown. Of different diets and so if you guys want me to also address specific types of diets and like which ones are better for certain types of weight loss like there's the Norwegian diet the Mediterranean diet there's there's a ton of different types of diets out there that studies have shown are effective for certain types of goals that people have. And so if you guys want me to get into any of that kind of thing specifically, um, let me know. And again, with, with supplements in particular, that'll be the next video that I get into where I'll be talking about breaking down protein supplements, using creatine, BCAAs, pre-workout, any of that kind of stuff. Those will be the types of supplements that I'll be breaking down and some of the things to consider, some of the risks that are inherent with taking supplements that people might not necessarily consider that can make them more risky. Oh, that is the sheerest gloss I've ever put on. <laughs> like it, it looks so pretty in the container, like it's gonna have like a really nice deep shade on there and then I put it on and I'm like, it's clear. <laughs> okay, NARS. 
Thanks for nothing. Yeah, well, that concludes this video, but I really hope that we can get a conversation going. I would love to know what kinds of questions you guys have just about weight loss in general. If you've tried any of the different types of weight loss programs that influencers have pushed out, and if you've had success or no success with them. Any thoughts really around any of this kind of stuff? I would love to know. Also, if you've tried a particular diet, paleo, keto, whatever it ends up being, I, I would love to know your guys' thoughts on any of that kind of stuff. If you disagree with some of the things that I was talking about, I, I would love to know. I'm, I'm really wanting to just start a conversation. By all means, drop me a comment. If you liked what I had to say and you want to see more of this type of comment, give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you want to keep seeing all of this stuff, uh, hit the bell, the notification bell, if you really, really like what I have to say and you want to be notified anytime that I plop a new video out there. But other than that, that kind of is it for this video. And so be safe out there and you guys go have a good one.